I've fallen and I can't get up. Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. I'm laughing because it's not very often you have to make a retraction video before you even published one. Uh, I went out the other day and recorded some commentary on the new 2024 Harley Davidson touring bikes. That would be the Road Glide and Street Glide. And I've got to confess, I was out of town last week. I was up in Salt Lake City for work, and I actually didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to the release that came out. I was just busy doing other things. I did see from somebody somewhere that the new Rogue Glide and Street Glide, which is piggybacking off of the redesigned 2023 CVO. The 2023 CVO had some really cool things, still does, variable valve timing. And then I heard that the new bikes were not getting that. So I went out, cut an entire video. Now, how stupid of me, because I didn't even look at the product to verify that for myself. I just kind of heard and then went on this diatribe about how I didn't think that it was enough. That video I was, I was gonna put out was going to be very embarrassing. So for anybody who's watched the channel long enough, you'll know that I have a 2018 Harley Davidson Heritage 114. So naturally being in the YouTube space, when the new bikes come out, it is big news. I just haven't been all of that really excited about Harley Davidson product portfolio in a while. The the one product that I think I was the most excited about after the 2018 Softail launch was the Pan America. I actually considered buying one and doing some off-road content. Uh, you guys know I'm big into the truck space, also getting into the side-by-side -side stuff as well. And I was really interested in possibly buying the uh, Pan America. Now, I really quickly, I kind of checked in with myself and realized I'm gonna get myself killed on that bike. I'm gonna go out in the middle of the desert break a leg. I've fallen and I can't get up. It just, it was a bad idea. So I swayed away from it. My views on Harley Davidson. I've also covered a lot of Indian motorcycles and Polaris products on this channel. I recently actually took an Indian pursuit from Phoenix all the way up to Boulder, Colorado on a, an incredible trip. I would love to actually do that now. Uh, the same trip on a, a new Harley touring model so I could really compare them. I think Indian really kind of pushed Harley to have to innovate. So I started looking closer at the uh, 2024 Street Glide and Road Glide. And I got to say, Harley Davidson is right there with, with Indian motorcycles. Now there's still some things I think Indian is doing better. There's some things I wish that Harley would do. I think they will eventually. I've got a whole bunch of speculative thoughts that um, I could go down that rabbit hole, which would be maybe another video. I love Indian motorcycles touring frame. They've got a mono shock in the rear, which Harley still does not have. They've got this uh, aluminum frame. That's uh, it's, it's a very lightweight bike for being enormous. I mean, it's, it's lightweight for what it is. It's still a very heavy motorcycle, um, but it's weighted very well. The technology is is great. Uh, the speakers were were pretty decent on what I rode. Um, overall, I had virtually no complaints aside from having to hard reset the infotainment maybe a couple times on that trip because Apple CarPlay would cut out. I started looking at this and I'm thinking like, well, okay, so Indian, I think their frame, the, the entire frame of the bike is better than what Harley has uh, currently. So then I started thinking, well, Indian still has the liquid cooled power plus motor, which Harley didn't have. And I thought the 117 was just the traditional 117, but they have actually gone to a liquid cooled heads. And I do like how they've done the radiator. It's not as big as Indian, which if you're going to critique Indian motorcycles on design. They've got this giant radiator up front. I don't think it looks bad, but I do know some purists do not like that. Uh, the other thing that's huge, low hanging fruit, LEDs, Indian's been doing it for a minute now and Harley Davidson is finally on the same wavelength of offering LEDs. That was always a big gripe that I had with Harley Davidson was you buy the motorcycle and they kind of walk you over to the parts department, like also take out your credit card because you're going to want LEDs. That's all gone. Uh, now you've got on these bikes for the price you're paying for them, 25 grand uh, to start. I would spec it up to about 30 grand, but you no longer have to pay for all the ABS, all those extra little things they kind of used to nickel and dime you out of all just kind of comes on the bike now. Uh, there's a couple little ads in terms of maybe wheels, uh, blacking things out. This giant screen, there's no add-on for having to pay for the bigger screen. 
a lot of stuff is just baked into that $30,000 price. Now, I've made a lot of videos uh, where I've talked about, I just don't think that the name Harley Davidson on the tank matters nearly as much anymore as it did maybe 10, 20 years ago because Indian came out and started selling competitive motorcycles with more features. I think that Harley Davidson has picked up a lot of those loose ends that now you're getting the name on the tank and a lot of these other little niceties. And truth be told, you're getting it at a competitive price point. So I made a video the other day, the consideration I would have between two bikes, it would be the Challenger or the uh, Road Glide. I have said, and, and I'll own my words here, that I would buy an Indian Challenger or Pursuit. I've said that I would buy that bike over a Harley. Now, as I'm looking price, I think Harley has, they've got the, the LED headlights up front, which I think it looks fine. I that's The design is kind of polarizing, but I've already kind of grown to appreciate it. They've got the LED taillights, which I think actually look like a CVO, so it looks more premium than what it did. The old touring bikes, I just felt like the way that the uh, the bracketry and the way that the, the bullet lights looked on there, they just looked like they were tacked on. Like Harley was selling motorcycles and was like, oh yes, we need to add lights. And that just comes down to modern technology now. It's easy to integrate LEDs into the design of the motorcycles as opposed to what it was before. So it just starts to look really, really dated. When you're going out and spending over $30,000 on a motorcycle that your average person, you know, you ride by them, they're not gonna know if that's a 2024 or a 1997. Uh, that's always been my kind of problem is you can just go out and buy an older bike and it looks kind of the same. The average person isn't gonna really know the difference. This is now the something that people are absolutely going to notice that difference. I'm looking at this now and saying, all right, what does Indian versus Harley? You've got a liquid cooled head, that checks a box for me. You've got the infotainment that has Apple CarPlay. This infotainment really goes into the same realm from what it looks like with Indian. I have not actually used it yet, so I can't speak on, on how good that infotainment is. Getting into the uh, the cockpit here, new hand controls. Uh, I think these actually seem to mimic, it's been a while since I've ridden the Pan America, but I believe these mimic those hand controls. They've actually re-engineered. I know they have on the Street Glide the uh, storage for a phone. On the old Street Glide, you couldn't even get the you know modern larger phones in, in the fairing. But now it looks like you can get phones in all of these compartments. It just looks like it's been re-engineered and addressed checking all of those boxes that you kind of heard people critique from the world of open-minded looking at Indian as a viable option. Uh, it looks like they've addressed an awful lot of it. The styling is really cool. I've actually seen uh, when I was at SEMA, uh, I saw the new tank design in person. I love the angled beveled look on the, the tank that kind of carries over to the bags. I believe, and I could be wrong here, but I believe that Indian still has a leg up on the key fob where you walk away and lock the bike, all of the bags lock. Yeah, these are still like barrel keys that, that lock the bags. Not a huge deal breaker to me. I don't think it's all that difficult to, to lock the bags, but it is really, really nice to walk away from the Indian bikes, hit a button and have the, the bags locked. I don't know, I'm looking at this and I'm just thinking like, maybe this is the time to make a jump for, for a touring bike and I do not know which route to go. Now, this is just kind of luck of the draw and obviously preferential, but I do very much like the white and black look. Uh, that's kind of how my truck has all been designed. Uh, I like, I just like the way this looks. They do not have with Indian at uh, this point, the color scheme that would match that. They've only got really a couple colors, black, blue. The red looks really sharp. I do love this red. In the sun, this red is mind-blowingly beautiful. It's, it's a really, really nice color. So this is what I would buy in the Challenger. This is what I would buy in the road glide. I don't know, guys. I think that Harley Davidson has done a really good job catching up with the competition. Also, drop a comment down below. Which fairing do you like better? Do you like the Challenger design or the road glide design? It's an interesting time to see the evolution of where motorcycle design is, is headed, but uh, I think that this is a kind of a pretty, pretty neat look. And um, I'm also, this, this has grown on me. I did not like the Challenger when it first came out. Uh, this has certainly grown on me. The only thing that I think I will say comparing fairing to fairing, not a deal breaker to me, 
is on the side here. So right on the edges, I feel like the Indian fairing starts to kind of balloon out a little bit. And I do think that Harley does a better job kind of stylizing that in a little bit. I think it looks a little bit sleeker. I could go with either one and not be upset um, by no means. So I don't know, guys. Let me know. Comment down below. If I'm in the market for a new bike, Indian, Harley, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to do anything right now. I'm, I'm still at this point of my 2018 Heritage serves me perfectly fine. I love that bike. I've said this time and time again. I think the Heritage is the perfect motorcycle for what I bought at the time that I needed it, uh, which was, well, that's maybe not needed it, wanted it. The, uh, the Heritage at the time that I wanted a motorcycle did what I needed it to do incredibly well, maybe even better than any other bike on the market, which is I needed a bike first and foremost to commute back and forth to the office. Now I work from home, not as big of a deal. So that's out of the question, but I wanted a bike that commuted to the office really good, had some bags that I could throw some stuff that maybe I needed to take to work with me. I could throw a rack on the back and strap a bag down to it if I had more to carry to work. But on top of going to work, I wanted a bike that I could throw a bunch of luggage on and just take it cross country if I wanted to do that. That is where you start to stretch the heritage out a little more than what it's meant for but it can do it and it can do it very well. Power to weight ratio was much better than what it was going to be on a full size touring bike. And again, it was just the right bike for me at the time that I bought it in 2018. But now I'm considering maybe making a change. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you guys think? It's, uh, it's an interesting time to be a, an American V-twin motorcycle fan. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time tuning in, Please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to help support the channel. I will see you guys next time.